Hey and welcome to the Simply Create Business Podcast. These episodes focus on businesses based in the London and Essex area. We are bringing you their stories, the journey, and a great insight into them as people and their businesses. In each episode, we explore where it all started, where they are now, and what's next. I'm so excited to announce this guest, originally from an estate in Leicester, to a self-made entrepreneur now based in London. He's gone from selling selfie sticks, making thousands of pounds a week at school, to nearly losing it all. He is the creator of the Instagram account, Rich Kids of the Internet, developing the brand that had its own BBC series and still regularly features in papers and magazines. We're going to jump straight into quick fire questions with James Ison dive straight in with some quick fire questions and then we'll go from there. Are you ready to begin? Let's go for it. Uh, okay, so um, are Jaffa cakes a cake or a biscuit? Biscuit. Um, takeaway or restaurant? Restaurant. Instagram or Snapchat? Instagram, easy. Tea or coffee? Tea. Mac or PC? Mac. Uh, autumn or spring? Autumn. Music while you work or silence? Uh, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh, teleportation. What is your least favorite chore? Hmm. That's the difficult one, that one. There's loads. Because <laughs> no one likes any chores, right? Expenses. Expenses. <laughs> Filling out expenses is a nightmare. <laughs> uh, good, good chore to have, though. Um, one thing you would definitely take to a desert island? Um, just, just one inanimate oh, object, is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Can be practical, can be for fun, pleasure, and I, I would take a lighter. A lighter, good choice. Um, one, uh, a morning person or a night person? Night. Favourite album, past or present? Music album. I know we don't tend to have them much anymore. <laughs> um, God, I'm thinking back to, <laughs> thinking back to when I was like 12, 13, 14. Um, I'm going to go with Feeder. Do you remember the band Feeder? No. Yeah. So no, he's, no, uh, no Feeder. Oh, wow. Name the song, okay. name the song. Um, Book Rogers? No? No, you got me. I'm sorry. Wow. I'm not, I would have gone, uh, uh, in previously I said Michael Jackson history. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I was going to say MJ, I was going to go Red Hot Chili Peppers, one of those. Right, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, fa- um, uh, peanut butter, crunchy or smooth? Or neither? Crunchy. Okay. And if I, you were going to ask a person a question like that, what question would you ask them? Um... Cats or dogs? Cats or dogs? Great. It, answer your question, cats or dogs? Dogs. Oh, good, good. Oh, I thought you were going to say cats. I'm not a fan, no, not a fan. No, no, no. Um, okay, so we're going to dive in, and it, this section's called In the Beginning. So um, anybody who's listening, watching, can you tell them about yourself? Tell them uh, about your past, how you got to where you are, what you like, what your hobbies are, all, kind of your journey so far. Yeah, so I've got a very random uh, strategy career life so i'm originally from leicester in the midlands and um mum's a single parent grew up on a um a relatively shit estate and when i was about 14 15 i used to buy and sell whatever i could on the weekends and i'd go down to a yeah a flea market at five o'clock in the morning to sell phone cases stickers um car parts anything i can get my hands on and uh, during that time essentially the internet kind of happened and eBay was like very much in its infancy. So I basically took everything I was selling on a car boot and put it online and it just escalated from there, I guess. And by the time I was 16, 17, before um, AS levels, I think it was before college, I was turning over like 500 quid a day. And at that age, it's like, Oh my God, you're a baller. Yeah. And you're yeah. And you're saving up for a car and all this stuff. And um, over time I got into Alibaba and okay. buy selling from Asia because obviously if you buy cases or whatever from there, it's pence versus the pounds. And I remember it right now. It was around about July two thousand and nine. 
I had an, a message on WhatsApp because essentially I've got all my suppliers on a WhatsApp group. And this one supplier said to me, James, there's a new product. It's this stick that holds a phone. I'm thinking, what? Okay, I have no idea. He said, trust me, buy 20 of them and you'll sell them. I was like, right. Essentially, it was the selfie stick. Okay. So I bought 20 of these things, sold them. Okay. Bought 50, sold them. And that summer between probably August to end of October, I think I was the number one selfie stick seller in Europe. <laughs> okay, so that's that's that's, 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 nothing else. that's how it happened. I was buying them for 27, 28 pence and selling them for 14.95. It was costing me more to ship them within the UK because Royal Mail is really expensive for anyone ever does e-commerce, never use Royal Mail. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and yeah, I was doing anywhere between 150, 200 units a day. And uh, yeah, I did uh, quite well out of it. And then obviously the market picked up, everyone invested, you can get them all over the high street now. Argos obviously went big on them. Um, and yeah, I got out. So what I did was, mum was very much like, no matter what, you're going to university. Okay. So back education line, uh, I went over and studied economics at University of Oxford Brooks. Nice going to be a banker, going to do all this rubbish. Um, I did work experience, did the placement year. I sat at an office for six weeks and thought, you know what, this isn't for me. I can't do a computer screen. I can't do getting up at six o'clock in the morning, getting in the office at seven and leaving at 11 or even sometimes one o'clock in the morning. And uh, I have a lot of respect for people that do that, uh, but it's just not for me. So... Yeah, I took uh, that lesson. I still finished university. I graduated in 2014. And essentially what I did, I went home. I went back to Leicester and I worked for a quite a large automotive company as head of marketing. So I brought a bit of creativity, some ideas to the table. And it was great because I learned a lot from my boss. My boss was a self-made guy. Um, to put things into perspective, he worked from the shop floor packaging to CEO by level. He actually remortgaged his house to buy out the company when it was bankrupt and that's how he became CEO. Not, and, not look, um, and one day he just turned to me and said, look, you're smashing it here, but the only way you're gonna ever make a career is not here in the middle of just gonna be in London. Because as you probably know, and as your listeners know, everything happens in London. All the networks here, all the big deals are here. Um, you got to be in this city and it, it is a lot more expensive and the lifestyle is crazy, but you got to be in it to win it. So I got a job down here working in technology again, learning to sell more B2B kind of role. Um, during that time I tried to start an app and I did um, a social nightlife app for four years. I lost a lot of money. Okay. If anyone in tech, uh, be careful because having an idea for an app sounds really good, but starting an app is very different to a website. So you might be able to go on to like I don't know, um, GoDaddy and build a website within a couple of hours. But to build an app, it's not as simple as that. Especially when you've got a really good idea and it's not the set in stone root of how an app's made. And I'm not a techie at heart. I just have some really good ideas, and I tried to make this idea a reality. I lost. I got $25,000, $26,000 in India, in an Indian tech firm. I then had a... Did you just didn't take off or because you, you, you lost it and never got to that? Um, the, reason it did, the reason it didn't take off, essentially, within the app game is um, you need investment. Okay. No matter how good your idea is, you need investment. And usually investment is five times the amount of money it costs. So if I said to you that the average app and a concept, a basic concept is between 60 to 100,000. Okay. Times by five, that's how much you need to market it. Okay. Really, you need to times it by 10 to do uh, a foundation build and then you raise again. And what you learn within the tech game and the startup game is you might have an idea, but at the end of the day, your biggest customer is actually your investor and okay. you're constantly, constantly raising money. I have a lot of friends that still do it. Uh, one of my closest friends, funnily enough, his name's James as well. He is every six months raising money. And if he doesn't raise the money, his company goes under. His idea is very good, um, but every every week, every month, he's meeting with investors. He's trying to prove return on investment. Cool. His growth is like this. Um, this whole idea that you have an idea and it just happens, it's very rare now because everyone's doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. Doing that. Every day, a thousand apps get uploaded to the App Store. So if you think about that, it's 365,000 apps a year. 
if you think no one else is doing it, your idea, you got to have a hard look at yourself and think, you know what, they probably are. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. With, my, with my plan, I built this app. I got um, all the brands, I got all the network involved. Four years of my life, did the sales pitch, built a team, got it all made. It was on the store. But essentially, without that investment, we could never reach the eyeballs, which would download. And getting downloads sounds crazy, it's actually quite easy. But getting repeat users and people to naturally go on their phone and pick your app over into Snapchat or whatever they're going on, it's really difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming, back, coming back into the app and using it regularly to, okay, fair enough. Well, I stopped doing that in October last year. And it was a big decision for me because I put my whole life into it. I told all my friends, family, I'm like, I was known for that business. Um, it was massive because obviously you invested four years of your life, all that money, and it's, do I, do I keep doing another six months? Do I do another week? Do I do another year? What do I do? Do I go and have another investment? Meeting? And it got to the point where it just, I only had so many hours in a day. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are, how rich you are, you only have 24 hours in a day. And you have to use those hours really as wisely as possible. Um, so for me, I said, thank you. That's the best lesson I've had for the last four years. And I've moved into other projects now, which I've taken all those skills and development and putting into these and touch wood is going to plan. So, um, yeah, that's uh, really my story. I moved down to London three and a half years ago. I live in beautiful Canary Wharf. I'm extremely lucky. Yeah, when yeah. I moved, to, I lived in Ealing, uh, which is like, opposite side end of the central line if anyone actually ever stays on the tube long enough they'll get there <laughs> but, um i needed to be in central i need to be able to walk to my meetings i need to be able to network i need to be able to work constantly um and that's what i'm doing i've got a five-year plan so we're in year three at the moment and we've got two more years and then we'll see where we're at and if yeah, I start... on that plan in terms of you know after obviously going to the specifics but is it going well is it going yeah. according yeah. to the plan um, is it According to plan, plans obviously do change, um, yeah, but everyone has a vision. Yeah. And step by step, week by week, day by day, hour by hour, you'll get closer to that, then you're on the right plan. Um, big, yeah. Yeah, tell, so to tell the people uh, where you're at now. So where, where in your business, you talked about getting, you know, through the eBay stage, uh, going on to this app stage, you're not kind of working out what, going to uni, going to business, uh, getting to the app stage. So what, what is it you do now and, and, and how? Well, I, do, I, do, I, do, uh, I do a lot of things. Um, I act as a consultant um, within sales. So building sales teams, building products, building services. Um, I'm really looking at the moment, I'm working with a global mobility provider. And I'm learning about how that all works in the, the world of travel. Um, which is very different to what I was doing previously. But if you can sell one thing, you could probably sell a lot of things. So yeah, I'm really enjoying that and the exposure to that market is really interesting. I've got my Instagram page, which is um, Rich Kids of the Internet, which was formerly the Rich Kids of Instagram. We had to change our name because uh, the word Instagram is actually trademarked. Okay. So yeah, some of your listeners or viewers might have uh, seen the account. It was on Channel 4 a couple of years ago, the big documentary. It's regularly featured in The Sun, The Daily Mail, The New York Times, CBNC. Yesterday we were in Forbes. Yeah, um, I quickly it, went through all your, uh, your website stuff. So yeah, you've got, got some amazing... It's pretty bad. It's, um, it's pretty bad in terms of this page is completely faceless. So I don't have to be in the photo or some pretty girl doesn't have to be in the photo to get the likes. And all essentially we're doing is reposting. But what's really interesting on the business side of it is the brands, luxury brands can reach people that are interested in that product. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's really exciting. So that's my main project at the moment and it's going well. Right. I've signed a couple of agents, um, commercial agents to bring on more sponsorship. We're doing more events. I'm learning more about the B2B side of it. And yeah, it's a, it's a crazy journey, and every week is different. But you got to have. I'm really lucky and luckier that you agreed to be on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> so thanks for that. Thanks for that. Um, was uh, okay. So was there ever a time, uh, and you kind of maybe touched on this with the app, but maybe not, uh, that you thought I can't do this, or that you've been really close to stopping or quitting or giving up? Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. Tell us about tell us about that. What got you to that point? How did you overcome that? I can give you I can give you so many examples. Um, so when I was really young, well, really young, when I was seventeen, uh, which is scary enough, is almost ten years ago. Uh, I bought a load of products from China, 
Um, I don't know if I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It was a product called Tangle Teaser. It's a hairbrush, okay? Hello, uh, Tangle Teaser. on Dragon's Den. Um, I basically bought a load of them, what I believed was the licensed product. It turns out it wasn't. It turns out it was a fake. It turns out it was a copy, right? And <laughs> when you have a delivery from DHL, which is approximately 25, 30 boxes, each box has around about 500 of these in, so you're talking 15,000 uh, hairbrushes really? arrive at your house. <laughs> and within 48 hours, you're told you can't legally sell them anywhere on the internet or anywhere in the UK or actually go to the court. Um, that makes you sweat. Yeah, I bet. Yeah? So can you imagine? So maybe I think the cost price at the time was about two two fifty. Um, yeah, you have all that money tied up in a product which you can't legally sell, you can't get rid of. Um, and you're living at home with mum. That's just that's just an example. So you have that. Um, and then you have getting, getting, are people still getting them as gifts for like birthdays and Christmases and stuff? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually every, every ex-girlfriend has that trademark uh, hairbrush. Um, <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, to, be honest, to be honest with you, what what we actually did, we organised a deal where we actually went to a recycling centre and we actually got them recycled. So oh. it's plastics, you can melt them down and do whatever oh. with them. But obviously, I made a loss on it. Um, it was a good lesson for me. Uh, it was a very stressful time. I was doing my AS levels at the time. I had all this money tied up. I used to get told off a lot in school because I'd be sitting there on my phone and um, I got in detention quite a lot because I just wouldn't take shit from a teacher they'd be like oh concentrate james and i'll be like well you know offense but i'm making two grand right now what the fuck are you doing in your life like not a good attitude to have um, at all but you're young and stupid right so there was that uh, and then you have days where you know what you think everything's against you i can give you an example so two weeks ago i had a really long day some days i start at about 6 6 30 mm -hmm. and i finish when i finish and that can be nine o'clock it could be one o'clock in the morning but mm -hmm. i'm still at the next day mm -hmm. and this one particular day i went out to an event um i had the event i had to have two big meetings that had taken almost six weeks to organize and they both cancelled on me and then i got home and i realized that i lost my key and i had nowhere to get in yeah so yeah. it's what one o'clock in the morning no I, I live on my own uh, i had no no method of getting in. I sat there thinking, I've got like this, I've got that going on, I've got people calling me, my phone was on like 5%, well, what do I do? And it's, it's moments like that where you think, you know what, if I had a normal nine to five, I wouldn't be doing these kind of things, I'd probably have a lot more of a, a social life as well. Um, which, social life and business, you have to find a, a really good balance. And I'm fortunate because a lot of my friends are like me. Um, I also have really close friends that are not like me. <laughs> so one of, my, one of my best friends is um, a carpenter, like no, a carpenter, an apprentice, and I take him to all these fancy events in Mayfair. Mm -hmm. and he, meets, he meets all these celebrities, and he doesn't change at all. And I love him for that. And yes. if you can come to that, it means everything because no matter how big and luxurious these lifestyles can seem, uh, sometimes you need a bit of reality and a bit of um, yeah, that kind of guy to just turn to just me laugh. So. Yeah, you do have ups and downs. And uh, so what you, made you what made you like ca carry on on those days? What was it? What what you, you got to those days? You, it was a day that you were like, ah, or you know, you, you just invested loads in a, in a product that you couldn't sell. So what yeah. what took you the the other side of going? Oh, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. No, actually, and now think, I'm reinvesting again or whatever. I think everyone's I think everyone's hungry. I think that's kind of a common theme. Mm -hmm. um, the difference is with I think someone like myself, uh, me people I meet down the pub who have really good ideas is I'll actually do it mm -hmm. and that's the difference it's like a lot of people have great ideas a lot of people are really good at chat right yeah. but no one's willing to say but four o'clock in the morning have that risk have those tears when something goes wrong and keep going yeah, and yeah. for me I, I think it's uh I do think it's innate I think it's something I've built up over time resilience think you know what today's a shit day but tomorrow is a new day and we keep going we keep going every day it's progress 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 and you will fail but failure is the best lesson yeah and like look at me i wasted four years of my life when i could have been going out to ibiza i could have been pieing i could have been probably another girlfriend or whatever but like me for example i could have been saving up for a house or or doing the whole like lifestyle that people seem to want to do at the age of like 22 to 25 but instead i was uh yeah like no, yeah that's yeah, amazing i think per, like perseverance to get through the hard stuff and continue is a, is a, is a massive thing um that, that's 
stops people and you know it does make the difference between the people that have it and people that don't um just in case anybody doesn't um no, um, this is kind of the plug section. So plug away. Where can people find you? Where can people go and check your workout? Um, Rich yep. Kids, the internet, etc. Give them all your handles and whatever you want to give them, really. Yeah, so the, the Rich Kids of the Internet, the main page is at RKOI. Um, we're verified with Blue Tick. I'm very proud of that. My cool. person at James M C I S O N. Um, yeah, my face will be on there, so you should be able to see that one. That they're my main platforms. I don't really use um, Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. If you want to check out that, that's very much more corporate side of me. Uh, we have our website. Yeah, Instagram is my platform. That's my go-to. Okay, is it? And, and that's where people can look at you. Know, watch. Yeah, feel free. Like you did DM me. I do look at my DMs. I'm not that much of a big deal. I don't probably get about 200, 250 a day, but I do go through them. I can, I can definitely vouch for James on that. Uh, as this <laughs> podcast is uh, happening because I think I DM'd him about an hour and a half ago um, and we're recording. So I definitely stand by that. So, um, and yeah, so if, if you've got an idea, if you're going through a bad time, if you just want a bit of advice, even if I do not know the answer, I will know someone that will. Like, it's crazy to say that. A lot of people say that. But generally, uh, for example, two weeks ago, I had a DM from a guy that said, oh, um, my mother's really sick and she's got this rare form of um, it's like a stomach virus and funnily enough i was actually in a meeting about an hour before that with someone that was working on harley street and i put the two together and uh, yeah, they had a free consultation and now touch wood they're on the road to now it's just a random one and that all came from a dm so like yeah feel free guys if you have an idea you just want some advice um i do invest in certain things as well mm-hmm. uh, i invest in everything just cool. claim like, don't just send me loads of powerpoints i don't like that um yeah. Yeah, just also be personal just like you were ray um i liked what you sent me i don't want a copy and paste message everyone can tell the difference mm-hmm. no matter how good your copy and paste message is everyone can tell the difference we'll be getting right back into the interview in just a moment we just wanted a chance to say thank you very much for listening if you're not already please subscribe to the youtube channel also we'd love to hear from you and your thoughts on the podcast so please make sure you get in touch on any of the social media platforms And finally, if you're listening to this in an app, please don't forget to rate and review. It's really appreciated. Right, straight back to it. Okay, so moving on to the present. So this is more like uh, me kind of pulling out some of the things that I'm interested in um, and kind of referring them to to business, but also kind of going on. Um, So uh, how do you or have you interacted and engaged with your local community? And and when I say local, um, yes, it means where you live. So maybe that's... Canary Wharf, maybe that's uh, when you lived in Ealing or whatever, but also your community online and your your business uh, colleagues and community. Okay, so um, I'll give you three examples. So when I was back home in Leicester, um, I got kind of well known within the local community as the selfie stick kid. So that was quite easy at that time. Uh, I'm still I'm kind of referred to as that when I go home. <laughs> it's always quite funny, but uh, yeah, essentially what I used to do is I used to help my mates out. Um, I'd get them packing for me at, at like Christmas times when I needed a lot of help. And again, I was just kind of that guy to just ask, okay, if I was going to put this money into that, what would you do? Or cause it's just kind of just bounce ideas of people. Okay. So flip situation, go to university at university, you meet some awesome people and university is a great time to kind of reinvent yourself. Um, and I think for me, I came out of my shell a lot better mm-hmm. than I just, because at university you've got this thing called, um, yeah, bullshit. So you just, if you don't want to be with that person, you don't need to be with them. Yeah. You haven't got to sit in the classroom with them. You haven't got to like get on with them. And there's no teacher there to make sure you don't hit them around the head with a pencil case or something. So yeah. uh, at university, it was really good. I got involved in the Entrepreneur Society. I had friends uh, that again bounced off ideas, clothing company ideas. Um, yeah, loads of different things. And yeah, uni as well is a really important time. Uh, that age between 18 and 21, like you might seem that you need to get your life together and you need to earn a shitload of money and be the next Bill Gates, but in reality, you need to just try everything and you'll find what works for yourself and you'll find what makes you happy or happier. So when it comes to that decision of career or project that you're working on, you'll know it's right, you'll have that good feeling. So that was quite a big uh, thing for me in helping other people and they also helped me a lot. I, I had so many friends that just backed me I was very fortunate with that and they're, they're brilliant for me, they're the best assets I ever have. And then now that I've moved to London, 
Um, funny enough, I do a lot of Instagram stuff. So like you today, slide into my DMs and look at <laughs> what we're doing right now. So uh, there's that. Uh, the tech side as well, there's a lot of workshops. There's a lot of things on Eventbrite, free sessions. That I just sometimes just go along, hear people pitch. Um, I love to pull things apart. I love seeing a pitch and I love to go, why are you doing that? Don't they do this? And it's not because I'm in being a dick or anything like that. It's just I want people to see things from other people's perspective. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Me, I wish I had that skill when I was younger. Because at one point I was very much, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. I wasn't really listening to noise. Um, and I think that's really important because when you focus so hard on something, you don't see someone else's perspective, which actually can make something better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Um, one thing I'm trying to engage with my kind of online community to do more is um, be actually critical of my work, not to just like it or say, well, like it's good because actually it doesn't help me. It, as much as I love it, it's nice to, to see that response. Um, it doesn't help me to get better, to improve, to, to, be, to be better because that's what I want to be. So I'm actually openly saying, if you don't like something, if it's not good, if you think I've done better, if it's crap, shit whatever tell me and i'll take it you know i'm happy to do that a little bit a little bit of help here and there makes it so much better. and you also need to understand you're not going to be able to please everyone no of course like, and my account has got 365,000 followers around the world and people love it but i also get hate every comment and i love that yeah because yeah. hate for me is brilliant because i know people are watching it and they're yeah, engaging yeah. in it and yeah, they don't realize that even them commenting yeah. terrible things about the account or me personally actually mm -hmm. helps me grow Mm -hmm. and yeah sometimes I learn from it sometimes I think you know what thanks <laughs> like it's all good so, yeah coming down to London was really really good in terms of the community there's there's so many different groups that you can get involved in um some different apps it depends what market you you want to target there's always people out there that are trying to do or have done what you're trying to do so that's what I would say is network as much as possible and this city doesn't sleep so there's always something going on Great, 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 great advice, and yeah, something that I've definitely, I'm definitely trying to uh, to push myself. So, um, why uh, you talked about ideas before, and I'm massive on ideas. Um, yeah. One of the things I say, whether you're going to hold me account to this, I don't know now, um, but is I'm quite relentless with with ideas. So again, if someone says a shit, it's fine because I know I'll come up with something else and I'll come back at it. Um, but uh, and that's why I'm big on um, businesses, especially kind of corporate businesses and creativity. Yeah. Um, how do you think creativity fits into what you do um, and what you have done and what you're going to be doing going forward? So if you'd have asked me five years ago, are you creative? I said, no, I'm not creative. I'm just a doer, right? I'm a, I'm a sales guy, I'm a doer. The thing is, if everyone's a doer and they just do it, we're all going to be the same. Creativity makes you stand out. It makes you stand out, makes your product stand out. It makes you memorable. And when you're memorable, and we call it socially sticky in terms of like technology and mm -hmm. apps and social media, then people just keep coming back organically. And that's the, that's the magic formula. That's the reason why things like Facebook and Snapchat are so popular is because you get that little dopamine hit, but you want to go back on it because your friends are on it because it's socially and it's almost like just a habit now, just a click and a lot. So you have to be creative because if Snapchat had just said in that same thing, then everyone would end up like MySpace, Bebo, we'd all have the same shit, right? It would, it would all be boring. So for me, um, I think it depends what environment you're in. And from my experience, corporates, they like to say that they're creative, but you're creative within this thing called a box, okay? This is your job, and uh, you, can, you can be creative as you want, um, but as long as it fits within that box, cool. Anything that's slightly outside that box that actually might make a massive difference to a company's revenue, a company's product, or even just employee welfare for example uh, has to get signed off mm -hmm. and you find that those people that are above they're not idiots they're very smart people they've got there for a reason but they might not be as creative as you are or they might have different creativity skills which doesn't see your perspective yeah. so they just want to not agree with it if they don't agree with it your creativity in that box has just gone to waste yeah, yeah. Um, so for me it's how you sell your creativity and how you come across in terms of, okay, this, this is my idea. And a lot of the time, if you're working for someone or you're working in a team, you have to almost make them think that that was their idea. And that is a very hard skill to do. And it takes years and it takes time. And there's a lot of practice to get it right. But if you can do that, creativity is 
the most useful skill because if you're in a bad situation you need a creative idea to get you out if you're in a good situation you need a creative idea to keep that idea going and more yep. so for me creativity is like it's the difference between i don't know an entrepreneur and a sales guy and there is a difference between the two I think they're, say, they're saying that we uh, the simply create heads up is that creativity will be the most sought after skill of the future because yeah. as as we drive with automation and things like that the things that are going to set everyone apart is how you how you do it rather than what we do um yeah. great um so what do you think is the most unique thing about you and your business um well so we just, if we just pick a, the instagram account for example yeah yeah anything yeah Okay, so what's so unique about that is um, social media is all about psychology, okay? It's essentially, social media is a way of people expressing their emotions via technology. So, people are obsessed with luxury, because luxury equals freedom, okay? Mm -hmm. People also love to hate. It's <laughs> a horrible skill that everyone has. If you look at the world of politics is based on people's opinions and other people hating each other. Mm -hmm. hating each other. So social media fuels that. So what I did with my account, I saw a gap. I said, okay, luxury, what are people going to hate? People are going to hate show-offs. Okay. What are they going to hate even more? They're going to hate kids showing off. So that's exactly what I did. I put all those three elements all into one, and I've kept that theme. And so far, <laughs> it's, what it, it's, it's proven its worth. And I think it's highlighted... And my account is interesting because it highlights that lifestyle. It also inspires. People will think, oh, I don't want to look at that kid with a Ferrari, but it does. It inspires people like me. It inspires people like maybe yourself. If if someone you saw someone, a kid that came up with a brand or they designed it from scratch and they made it and now they've got this, they've got X, Y, Z, they're investing in other things. Yeah, yeah. Like that's inspirational. I think it's better to put that kind of material out than just Brexit and environmental protesters. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The other thing is, is exactly that is from just that statement. It's, it's uh, creates a, a bit of controversy as well. In yeah, I think mean, everything has to have a bit of controversy. There's no like, there's no such thing as bad publicity, no matter what people say. Yeah, um, I think it can damage your brand. But if your brand is not dynamic and you haven't got creativity, then uh, you're going to struggle. So that brings us back to that last point of yeah you need a bit of creativity in everything you do so what's unique about rich kids is that i took that risk i took that gamble i looked at the market i looked at what fueled people uh, we put it together and we've actually almost we have well my account created a market we were the original rich kids account if you look on there now there's rich kids france rich kids switzerland rich kids, there's a whole market now we yeah. were a market maker because yeah. we had that creativity to have a go and yeah, it's uh, pretty cool to say. In, um, in a bid to al almost try and bring you some value, some help, some support, I suppose, is can you tell people something that you're struggling with? Um, now, that doesn't mean that you necessarily, you personally, it could be a business, something that you're looking for, someone you're interested in trying to find, whatever that is. Uh, just uh, the, the reason for this question is that um, to kind of highlight that it, there's struggles every day, no matter who you are, no matter how successful yeah. you are. So. Yeah, I can give you a prime example. Uh, so last night I am working with a new nightclub, okay? And I dabbled in the whole promoter game, guest list tables and that for years, like well, two, three years ago, I stopped doing it. But um, yeah, we essentially, we're gonna run a night. Uh, it's on the 25th of May. It was a place called Jacko, High Street Kensington, pitch. Okay. Um, and the theme is the Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. okay? And again, my creativity i said what's luxury what's kids what people going crazy what can corporates relate to bang that's one of my favorite films it's a fantastic story uh, leonardo dicaprio and margot robbie brilliant actors nice, so yeah. Uh, yeah why don't we make that into a party and that's what we're doing so in terms of struggles i've never done any event planning in my life so the whole new minefield uh, there's more to it than what i thought so if anyone can help me out on that, if anyone's got any advice, if anyone wants to uh, come down and... Is there anything yeah. in particular you're looking for? Because this will actually go out now in the next few days, so... Okay, yeah. so... Maybe someone might see it here before. We're, we're looking for ballers, obviously, to come down. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I think some creative direction would be good. So anyone that's worked in a venue, uh, event management that's had to put something together, like, yeah, the more brains, the more eyeballs that we've got, the better. The experience. How, about, how about a theatre background? 
a theatre background. Even better. That's, I've got that. So right. if you've got any questions, fire it over, yeah. What are you doing on Saturday? <laughs> uh, on what day? Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, if you want, slide into my DMs and I'll, uh, and I'll let you know. I'll, I'll, see what, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what uh, I can do. No, no, if you, if, obviously, if, you, if genuinely, if you have any, got any, uh, any questions and stuff, I'll be ha always happy to. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because essentially, if you look at really big venues now in London, they've all got that one thing in common. They've all got something that's Instagrammable. So you look at restaurant hours, they've got the flower wall. You look at Ellen Abbey yeah. again, the flower wall goes yeah. go crazy for it. And yeah. no one realises that that's actually their marketing expense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't market, they just have a flower wall because they know that people will take photos and tag it and tag the location and come back. And then people will say, I want to go to that cafe because I want the photo. 100%. Yeah. You know, the, one, uh, the, one I, the one I always see that's like that is the wings, stand in front of it and take a picture of the wings. That's, that's London Rain. Uh, shout out, guys, I'm always there. Um, yeah, you got that. You got restaurant hours with the corridor uh, going down with the lights. Yeah, that's Amazing. pretty. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. yeah. There's so are you, are you yeah. planning on creating one of those? We're creating many. I mean, oh, okay. like, honestly, if I, if I, I don't want to tell every, everyone no, on no, this no, what we're doing, but some of the ideas we've got, you can imagine the Wolf of Wall Street. There's a lot of things that go on in that film, and I can tell you that we've basically bought everything that film offers and more. <laughs> um, sounds sounds and amazing. Food. Mad. I, I was uh, in Chelsea last night. We had, we started our meeting at just past nine o'clock. I think we finished about one. Just yeah. talking, bouncing ideas off each other. That's like, like, like midget start boards. Of course. Straight. If you didn't have that, it's not even Wolf of Wall Street, right? Like we've even, I've even ordered money guns. You know, little. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's going to be off the uh, charts. So, twenty fifth of May is the bank holiday weekend. The Saturday. Uh, Jacko is the location, and they buy tickets through there, or for how, do, how do people get? Come direct to my Instagram, and I will sort you out. Cool, wicked. Um, yeah. the kind of a little bit of a leading question. You probably answered this already, but hey, uh, the question is, how do you advertise your business? I'm assuming Instagram, right? Yeah, it, I'm very lucky um, because I can post a photo of someone, and the papers pick it up. So, I'm, that is really like a golden uh, USP for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of what I do, um, I try to engage with as many people as possible and put a face behind the page mm -hmm. because obviously I'm not on it all the time. And I think that works really well. So what I try and do is I build a network. So for example, we met you. Uh, so now I'm thinking if I have a, a rich kid or a high net worth individual or celebrity that parties with us, I'll send them your way. You know, and I like to do that. And I think that brings value back to me, adds value to you. And yeah, you see a real strong relationship, and I think that's the best way of advertising. Yeah, the yeah. best way of advertising will always be word of mouth. Cool. Um, it's the cheapest form as well. It's just a couple of words. It's not costing me anything to speak to you. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. I don't really advertise per se. Okay. Um, do you have a practical tip um, for anybody starting out who wants to get started in whatever field? Uh, something that you kind of learned the hard way. You, you looking back, you can uh, give some, uh, yeah, something to actually go and do. Um, uh, is what I mean by kind of practical. Oh, we're just talking like a general. Anyone that's got a project doesn't have to be Instagram. Doesn't have to be selling. No, whatever. yeah, anyone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, this is going to sound really silly, but shut this and just go and do it. Like literally, get a piece of paper, write down what your project is break it down, like break it down into like day, hour, minute by minute, and just do it. And if you do one of those things, you did more than you did yesterday. The problem you have, and a lot of young people have, especially with the university students that I help out, they have these really good ideas, really big projects, and they make a massive like spider diagram or PowerPoint pitch deck. And you think, have you actually looked into this? Have you actually even checked if that name is taken? Have you actually checked? Have you even got the domain for it? Have you? created a logo like have you done x y z and they're trying to do too much at once and you almost overwhelm yourself and that's why people quit it's not because um they can't do it because they put so much pressure on themselves they're trying to do too much at once and the best most successful people in the world probably do two to three things a day that's it it's that and they do it and they do it well because it's better to do two things two three things a day than do 10 things and only do 10 percent of each one of them they're doing so, it wholeheartedly and get it done. Yeah, for me, I, I, all I can say is anyone that's got a project, break it down as much as you can and just say, right, 
I'm going to do that. Don't move on to the next one before we do it. Don't be cheeky and be like, oh, I, I want to design a logo. I'll do the logo first. Because logos are fucking bullshit. Yeah. Like, do one thing and do that. And just do it well. And then slowly but surely, you're building a foundation to hopefully have a really successful project. Okay, last three questions. Um, one might, you might have already touched on. What are you most excited about for your business in the next 12 to 18 months? So you obviously talked about the event. So that sounds like it's going to be off the hook. So... Mm. So I'm just seeing. No worries. Um, you get yes, you get some thinking time anyway. Yeah. So what in the next twelve to eighteen months, the direction you're planning to go in, you've talked about the three to um, five year plan anyway that you're on. What are you most excited about? Okay, so I'm going to tell you because it's going to happen. I'm that confident in it. Okay. Amazing. Well, people need to have a vision and they need to be so confident that no one can put them off. Okay. So I'm going to put rich kids of the internet or rich kids of Instagram on the luxury map, and what I mean by that. So I'm now signed with a commercial agent. He's going to be bringing in brands and sponsorship, bigger names than what I've got right now. Mm -hmm. So where I see the account going, I feel that we will be going to businesses. I will be creating content. I will be advising on other pages, on other brands, how to build stores, how to get eyeballs to the screen. I think the world of Instagram and social media is the future. Mm -hmm. If you look at your phone, you spend more time on your phone than any other screen. If you watch Netflix, how many people actually watch Netflix without their phone in their hand? Mm -hmm. yeah. Agreed. The phone yeah. is going to be the first screen. While they're, doing whatever, while they're watching whatever series they're watching. So, yeah. Exactly. Like, we all do it. We're all there on WhatsApp, Snapchat, whatever. And we all just... And it, it's, it's actually scientifically proven that a tick, a, a like, what is it? A notification is more of a dopamine hit than cocaine. Yeah. So... You That's can great. imagine how addictive we are to our phones, right? Yeah. So for me, I want to put rich kids into the luxury sphere on that. I want to work with brands. I'm going to be doing a lot of press. I'm going to be putting my face out there. I'm going to be talking about the dark side of Instagram, uh, mm -hmm. which I think is huge. I think influencer marketing. Mm -hmm. I hate that word. I hate the word influencer with a passion. Yeah. What, um, why, is that? why is that? Sorry, just to touch why is that? Yeah. Because you can go on the internet right now for 80 to 120 quid, buy a fake account with fake engagement, take a photo of uh, this water bottle, and then cool. try and rip the brand off. That's why I hate it. Okay, fair enough. Um, and unfortunately, that's the, the biggest enemy in this market. I'm sure you're aware as well. How many people go to a brand and go, I'm a social media expert? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. You've got, and then you've got the hybrids. You've got the agencies that will charge brands thousands, I'm talking tens, hundreds of thousands, yeah. to get access to me and my page and then take an 80% cut. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. an interesting place. And um, yeah, I, I kind of want to take a stand on that. I want to build an actual viable business from that. And I feel that when I talk, I have uh, credibility because I've actually done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Ask these social media guys. Ask these social media guys. Have you ever had a page that's verified that's reached that, that's reached press organically? They haven't. Yeah. No. No, so, my answer to that is I haven't. <laughs> yeah, you, you haven't, but like, I think it's good to get, again, it's good to get perspective. You need other people. Of course. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, um, it's a dangerous market. We're seeing these stories now in the papers of these kids asking for free things all the time and yeah. brands and stuff out. And it's it's nightmare because when I go to a pitch, I have the same questions. They're like, "Is it legit? Is it this?" I'm like, I'm having to fight against those other kids that are faking it. And yeah. uh, so, yeah, is it, it become tougher for you then in that way, or are you just a bit more like? I think, I think like last eight, last eighteen months it has, but I think recently this year, um, brands have got better. They're so much more smarter. They're hiring younger people. Uh, people are slowly but surely getting into managerial positions which actually understand social media. Yeah, and they're yeah. looking for genuine engagement, right? There's a lot of study, yeah. like, stay close yeah. to like, social chain and stuff where they're talking about, they've done the whole study on fake influencers and, and things like that. So they are clamping down on it a bit, which it should yeah. open doors for genuine people that are interested. It's really interesting because even, again, organically, you've got the Fire Festival uh, Netflix documentary, mm -hmm. which yeah. we were, I was, well, we were part of it. Okay. We did the whole uh, orange, uh, <laughs> orange post and everything. We got paid and we did our job. Yeah. But yeah. it's highlighted the power of it. It's also highlighted the fact that it's a massive risk. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. regulated. And I think, I'm hoping that there is going to be some sort of regulation that comes in or some sort of guidelines. Because 
yeah, like I said, you get these guys that are making silly money ripping people off. The amount of people that I that DM me every day trying to sell Bitcoin forex to people that have got a clue, and all it takes is one percent of the audience that they're reaching to do it, and they're making hundreds of thousands and then running off with the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so ex- ex- apart from uh, Instagram. What's yep. one app that you use the most that you find the most productive? Let me have a look. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be WhatsApp. It's between WhatsApp and Instagram. Uh, so you can, it was something again you you use to network, right? Yeah, well, WhatsApp's um, crazy. So I, I'm not shy. I've actually put my personal number on my uh, personal Instagram. So again, if people want to message, reach out. Do it on WhatsApp. I am quite good at getting back to people. Um, the voice note is the best thing in the world. Agreed. Apart from, apart from when you have uh, like five or six conversations going on, and you can't remember, you have to play back. Um, uh, I was shocked when you voice noted me because I'm a massive voice noter as well. And then when it came through, I was like, oh, okay. Just jumping on the voice notes. I love it. I absolutely love voice note. I also use a lot of speech recognition. So if you just press the microphone, just talk, eventually it'll learn your vocabulary, it'll learn how you speak. And uh, it's always better than typing, right? Um, so yeah, WhatsApp is massive for me. I have a lot of groups uh, where we just throw ideas, bounce ideas off. But for me, you need to understand that WhatsApp and social media are nowhere near as powerful as meeting someone face to face. Like even this, even video conference is good. I can see you, I can react to your body language. Of course. But the interview wouldn't be better if we were face to face in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is what we're doing and we're making the best of it. So it works. We were flying by the seats of our pants, like I said before. Um, okay, so last question and this is the one I'm probably now not looking forward to because you uh, you already told me you don't know what you're in for. Uh, but is it, I give a chance to anybody that I ask questions for um, to ask me a question back and I'll do my best at uh, answering it. So yeah, if you've got a question for me, um, I will try and attempt to answer it as best I can. Okay, cool. So you obviously DM me, what, about three, uh, 1.30, so yeah, nearly three hours ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, I get a lot of these DMs and I hear a lot of stories and I hear a lot of horror stories about people acting as like agents, acting as advisors, acting as sort of social media. I want to know what sets you out from everyone else because everyone's these social media experts now. I want to find out if I was to recommend you, right? Um, what, what would I say? people that would make them think yeah okay we're going to give him a shot actually that's the guy we're looking for he's not just some sort of kid that's just going to buy a lot of fade lights or tell us that we need to put the location on our posts um, uh, and that's the question to you uh, so feel free. okay so uh, well, i've kind of mentioned a few actually uh, bits and pieces kind of along the conversation which has probably helped me for this question uh one is i have a theater background and i'm going uh, off track slightly but um i'm a storyteller like that's what i was that's what I've been uh, ultimately been drilled into me since I was probably 11 when I got into theatre. Uh, yeah. And when I got into theatre, I also got into TV, film. Uh, I did EA sports games. I kind of, my career was going, you know, fairly well. Uh, I went to uni where it had to slow down a bit and I studied theatre at university. Um, so how um, to capture audiences, how to, um, I'm, a vi- I'm, a, I'm very visual, so um, how that storytelling comes about. Um, and that's what I kind of work with more when I work with people um, than telling them all the h- h- hints and tips. The hacks they can go and Google and find out on YouTube, they can find all that out. What I work with them on, who they are, what they really stand for, what they want to, what they're really trying to drive. Um, yeah. I'm driving massively creativity. Everybody's creative, everyone's got a story to tell, uh, and everyone can bring that out. They've got to find the right way. So it's not always video, it's not always pictures. Maybe it's podcast, maybe it's uh, drawings, whatever that might be. They've got to find the, the way that's right for them. But actually pulling it out is the bit I work with them on over the course of their Instagram or their yeah. social media. I like that. I like that a lot. And uh, I can completely vouch for that. So recently I did a brand hero workshop. And uh, funny enough, it was directed by two guys that were in Fierce Studies. And I sat there thinking what are these guys going to tell me how to read a script or like you know, how to do some faces. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, it was brilliant because they got us out of our comfort zone, taught us bu- buzzwords, pacing, um, mm-hmm. body language, how you hold yourself. And even even little things that for me that I've, I've been in business since I was like 15, 
the corporate side as well, like little things that make a massive difference because you're exactly right. You need to portray your story and it's all about being memorable. People yeah. need to look like, right. So I'll remember you because you stood into my DM three hours ago. You had the bottle to do it. Your messages were very personal. You're a nice guy. We sat on this call on my terms, which was very out of the blue. So I know that you're willing to go the extra mile to do that. And I can, I can vouch for you for brands for that. Which so is- yeah. Um, having your story and that's something for your listeners as well is being true to yourself having that confidence to say yeah this is me this is what i'm going to do and this is how we're going to do it let's stick yeah. to that and i think I'm not, I'm not i'm not scared to fail either actually it's something i advocate you know like you mentioned earlier and i think it's um it, it's really is I, I tell everybody that they're going to fail and you just got it's, sure. it's how you stand it's when you fall down it's how you stand back up again right that's basically. you're going to fail you're going to lose friends people are going to call you an idiot you're going yeah. to sit one o'clock in the morning, like, what am I doing with my life? You're looking at your bank account going, should I go to Nando's or should I buy some more social media advertising? Been there, done it. Like, yeah. that's what it is. It's all about those kind of days. And if you really want to do it, and yeah, you have to also think, what's success? Like, is success having a business that pays the bills? Is success having a Lamborghini? Like, there's, there's two different things there. I'm not into cars, you, but yeah. You're not into cars. What, what are you into? What uh, you like? Well, okay. I'm sport. Okay, what sport? Um, at the minute, heavily American football, but mainly football. But I support Ipswich Town Football Club, so you know we're not oh. doing. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But well, what about you? Are you into sport? Well, I'm I'm a rugby boy at heart. Um, okay. I'm also a Spurs fan for my sins. Um, yeah, I'm doing all right at the minute, though. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll keep quiet about that. It hasn't happened. Yet, <laughs> um, and obviously, the new stadium, everyone loves it. And yeah, there'll be some NFL being played there soon. So yeah, yeah, I saw that two games, right? I always get um, a couple of tickets, so if I can get one spare and you're up for it, we'll go. 100%. Yeah. I just said this right on your thing so people can like, vouch for you if I fuck it up, but yeah, no okay. worries. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. For, that's, that's it, unless, uh, you know, I know you've got a busy schedule. Thank you so much for the, the time. Um, it was really out of the blue, but, I, you know, I love the let's just get it done kind of um, um, thing. And, uh, yeah, I really appreciate your time. So thank you very much. All the best for the future. Cheers, Ray. Thank you for listening to the podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a review and any comments with any feedback would be much appreciated.